Welcome back all, Des from Motorowa Techniques. Uh, up this week, going to be looking into a product called Arkamora. So Arkamora comes out of the Netherlands. So it stands for Arduino Controlled Model Railway. If Arduino is not your thing because you're not into the code and so forth, this might be the option for you. This week, we're going to be looking at the LocoNet side of things and the detection. A big shout out to all my people out there that have supported the channel on Buy Me A Coffee. So I will put a link to that below. So without their assistance, uh, none of this could be possible. So thank you very much to all those who have helped me out. So don't forget to subscribe, like, click that little bell icon to be notified of upcoming content. Let's get into it. So what is Arkamora? So Arkamora is Arduino controlled model railway. So it's something that uh, Nico Tiering out of the Netherlands has uh, devised for us people that want to use Arduino and with the with the, the cheap technology that, that's out there, but don't really have the skill all the time to write the sketches, so to speak. So, so a little bit of background on Arduino, if you're not aware of what it is. So Arduino is um, basically a little micro computer that has many, many external connections or what, they, what they're what they referring to as pins. So these pins can be either an input or an output depending on how you set up and what type of device you have. So on the back of uh, these, these inputs and output pins, we can control many other devices and I've showed in other videos on how to use them and what sort of effects you can achieve or automation around your Motorola. So the big issue I've got is I'm not all that au fait with the programming side of things. So in the Arduino word, they, they call them a, a sketch side of things. Um, I can very easily copy and paste it into there and upload it and change little aspects to the sketch. But to actually write it from scratch, um, I, I would have no idea, hence why I looked at Arkamora. So some of the pros and cons of what I'm looking at Arkamora. So the big one is, why is it so good, I think, from my point of view, is the ease of programming. Programming is probably not quite the right word because you don't actually program at all. So it's, you basically, uh, Nico has set up a an interface, so to speak, where you just answer, it's almost like a true and false or yes or no type scenario, exactly how you want to control it. It's pretty well as easy as that. So the uses are, is obviously in the DCC side of things with stationary type decoders and also LocoNet products, which I'll show you first. So up on screen there is one of the, the LocoNet devices that I have purchased from, from Nico. That's um, his, that's his version, obviously online. I'll put the description to the website below. In effect, it's a, a 16 channel input that takes a feed from the local net world um, out of your command, your DCC command station. So you can either connect what supports, I should say, infrared, read switches, and current drawing occup occupation, um, occupancy detection, I should say. Um, that's what I'll be primarily looking at today. So if you're going to do the, if you're going to do the current draw, um, like I'm looking at, you need another piece of hardware. It's called the little Oki here. So this does... So you'll need two of these for 16 sections. Um, I only do eight. So a feed comes in from the left-hand side and feeds out to the right-hand side to your individual selected tracks. So you can buy these in kit form, and they literally take about 10, 15 minutes to put together, even someone that doesn't have very good soldering skills like myself. And they're all online to, uh, to purchase from Nico. So I'll just quickly show you the components. That first one there, that is the Locona interface with all the components. And this is the little Oki. As you can see, they're lovely little circuit boards, both of them. Um, there's not really many components to them. And as I, I won't show you how to solder them, I won't show you how to suck eggs with that, but they really don't take all that long at all to put together. So this is the, the Uno R3 that we'll be using and also the Arc Loco interface right next to it. So it's just a matter of once you solder it together, um, it's probably something that's not explained. It's just a matter of lining the pins up. So Uno on top, Arc Loco on the bottom there. It's just lining the pins up. Make sure they're all nice and square so you don't bend them. And then it's just a matter of pushing them together so you then get a nice tight fit um, as we've got in that photo there. 
This video is proudly sponsored by PCBWay.com. If you're a tinkerer, inventor, or advanced electrical engineer, you need to check out PCBWay or you are seriously missing out. They are passionate about PCBs ranging from standard to advanced PCBs with one to 30 layers with full featured printed circuit boards. PCBWay don't stop there. They offer basically everything you need to make your ideas a reality. Whether you need 3D prints, injection molding or CNC machining, assembly or basic PCB manufacturing, they can do it all for highly competitive prices. Check out their awesome services in the link below and their offer to my viewers who support this channel. Watch out for my upcoming videos where I'll be using some of their products. So let's look at downloading the interface. So in we're here in Arkamora.com and I'll put all the links to this below. So we're in the download section here. So up so now we're going to go to the, the download section. And now what you'll see, um, mine's already downloaded. I did it before, but it'll come up with a um, a zipped file. So it's just a matter of going into wherever your downloads come to, unzipping the file to the, to the given location you want it, and executing the, the program file. So depending on what your Windows is, mine's come up with a little error there, but that's normal. It's just a matter of working your way through that. So there it's, it's saying download the four different options, obviously, to do with uh, the Mardek, the Art Loco, and also the Signal version side of things. But So it'll download all four at once. So it's just a matter of working your way through. So what we've got here is um, down, where you want to download it to. You can select it off, is my understanding, to what programs you might want to download or not. So as I said, I'm going to download all. So it's just a matter of following bouncy ball. This is in real time, so it doesn't take that long at all. So you should get the Arc Amora has downloaded successfully. And then you just push the finish button. And what will happen, it will set up a whole lot of... So now it's just a matter of it will download four different files and a whole lot of user manuals. So these are a European user manual, a Dutch language. So it's just a matter of going back into the website if you want... A German, Italian, and the English version. So obviously I've downloaded the English version. So it's just a matter of now we're, we're opening up the upload tool here. So this what this, this effectively does is puts all the information, all the bits and pieces of the program onto your Uno. So I'm using the AR Loco, so you need to use Uno for this one. So it comes up with this, first of all, this screen here. So it's obviously mine's plugged into COM port 12. So it's just a matter of finding which COM port you have plugged your, your device into. And I'm using a Windows machine here. So if you don't know how to find a COM port, it's just a matter of going in through your device manager and finding out which one it is. As I said, mine's COM port 12. So at this point, yep, you just type in COM 12 and confirm that on the OK. So that will not start looking or communicating that. So the next little screen comes up with what device you're using. So with the AR Loco, you could either use the DCC Next, the Uno, or the Mega 2560. Um, you cannot do that. Use a Nano with the Ayala or AR Loco. So what you do, you type in number one, two or three, but mine's the Uno, so it's going to, I'll be typing in number one. And then you just acknowledge that by the OK, and then we work out, and it's going to tell us which program we're going to use. So it's either the Mardek, uh, the, the Signal version, the AR Loco, or the DCC monitor. So I'm going to go number three, which is the AR Loco. And then it's going to come up, upload to AR Loco to the Arduino Uno on COM port 12. So you say yes or no on that. Just make sure you've got the right COM port. And you'll get this little uh, command prompt. So you'll just see it quickly buzzing along. That's obviously put all the program up onto where it needs to. If you don't get this this acknowledgement, AR Loco is, or has success, successfully installed, um, go through the process again. Do you wish to create a shortcut for this? So I'll go yes. I acknowledge that with a yes. Okay, so now the shortcut, it's going to ask for a name. So I'm just going to get Loco one So that's going to be Loco for my module number one. And that will come very apparent shortly how I number my modules. And just push OK on that. And it, now it's going to ask you, do you want to start? The, the first thing we're going to look at is what number we're going to give it to. So this is just purely an administrative number. So as I, called, as I said before, I called it Loco number one for the shortcut so i will call this number of ar loco number one so it's going to give you the option of continuous or pulse so for the detection i'm using which is the occupancy detection via voltage drop i will be looking at 
So I'm going to, as I said, I'm going continuous. So push enter on that. So this is where you now add the addresses 1 to 250. So these modules can only go up to addresses 1 to 250. So that's up to 250 separate detected sections or blocks within your on your model railway or model railway. So this is where it's very important to keep tabs of all your, your different sections and the like, just purely for, for fault finding and the like. So at this point, this is where you put what they call the base address. So the base address is the first address, number one. So mine's 112. And then depending on how many sections you got within your the module you're using, as I said, the UNO that I'm using is a um, 16. So it's your base address plus one. So the next one will be number two, three, and so on. So what we're going to quickly look at here, I've just gone quickly to, to the user manual because it's something I didn't look up. So it's given me the option to do an inversion. So the standard inversion of the sensors, the default is set to low. So this will be more, you don't really need to understand the science behind it, I suppose. Um, or the low means zero volts and the signal at that point is considered um, as occupied. However, if you invert it to the other to the other way or invert it on its head so to speak which would be used for more to do with um, when you're breaking a beam of an in infrared if that's your the way you're going to use your detection you will then the light beam the, the beam will the train go through the beam that interrupt that in that regards and it'll bring it to a high value which is then um plus five volts so at that point when it's inverted the ar loco will see a high signal when occupied so that's just the, 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 t the two ways of doing it. So it's just a matter of answering that. I'll put it as no. So it's obviously defaults to no anyway. So the next one we're looking at here. So the one we're going to look at here is the delay before setting free in milliseconds. So you can go anything from zero to 3000 milliseconds, which is three seconds. So this is a good one if you want to, if you've got trains that are only detected at the front and you want the block to remain free, or sorry, block to remain occupied within your given program, like train controller, JMRI, or iTrain, and you don't have detection in the rear of the train. So I'm just going to put this as uh, half a second. So the next one I'm going to look at, which is quite can be quite important if you're getting getting what I call ghosting occupancies. So this is the delay before setting occupied. So often what will happen. Normally, if it's a poorly wired layout, you can actually get um, ghosting. So there's nothing actually there, but it'll set off a, an occupancy. So sometimes you just need half a second to a second of delay before it'll go occupied, and that should be tickety-boo. So at that point, that's the last one. It's just a matter of uh, pressing the Enter button on that. And now you can see down the bottom here, it's got... It's probably, sorry, just out of screen, but on the very far far left there it's giving you what sensor is so we got sensor 1 2 3 through to 16 and it's given me um, so and what type of occupancy it is so we've got a little bit of information at the bottom of the screen here and I'll just drag the, the interface up just so you can actually see it so you'll see along the bottom along it's specific action a b e i r s and v so whilst you're learning like I am you can actually just press and what these are, these are just um, varying parameters. So it's just a matter of pressing the, the the question question mark key, and it'll give you everything what you can actually do. So B, base address, sensor settings, initial default settings, set bug mode, um, etc. And obviously E for exit mode. So I can't stress enough, you always need to push the E for exit mode. So if you don't go the E for exit mode, when you, when you try using the Art Loco to do some detection, um, you'll find that you'll find that you, you can't actually use it for uh, to detect anything. It just keeps in there. It's edit mode. So what we've got up here on screen, um, I'm, for my test rig, I've got a Digikai's DR5000 DCC command station. So with that comes a... I'll just bring up the, the interface real quick. So the beauty of this system as well is it's got a, a LocoNet feedback detection interface for one of a better phrase so what you can actually do is if you're going to we're looking at the loco net t go right out so it gives you all the possible connections that this particular dr5000 can do obviously the the ar loco interface that we're 
can only go up to 256. So I'm looking at addresses 113 and up. So what we'll quickly do, I'll quickly show you a very, very crude way I've tested tested it. I'll show you other ways um, later on the video also. So we've got the, the completed AR Loco shield here. We've got the Uno underneath. That's got a, a five volt DC power supply to it. And also we've got the LocoNet cable coming in on the top here. And then we've got the, the Oki which is the interface between the two and the track. So this top here is what I'm gonna call the common run from this is from the DCC power bus, or the, sorry, the DR5000. So this is the, the, the common. And then this little guy here is what I'm gonna replicate is coming out from the track. So it's just a matter of going over and we'll go over to the, the screen here. And if we were to touch it, so you can see that address 113 comes off quite nicely. And the next one here is 120 and so on and so forth. So you'll see each time where we flicker off a, when we're getting a, a loco net signal coming through, you'll see the little red LED here will also, also come up. So that's the end of this video. I was initially going to show you in Train Controller how you would add the LocoNet address to a contact indicator, but for the interest in keeping this sort of video um, a little shorter than, than my normal ones, I decided not to. So it's uh, obviously it's inherent to each individual program, whether it's JMRI, iTrain or Train Controller or others out there, Rock Rail, or similar, how you go about doing that. So you just need to quote your user manuals on how you'd go about doing that on your given program. So real fun project. Obviously, you got to have a little bit of a soldering skill, not too much. The, the, the circuit boards are very self-explanatory they're not all that difficult the instruction manual put together by nico is fantastic so if i can do it with my limited soldering skills so can you so and it's just a matter of finding yourself an uno and then plugging the board in which is all explained in the user manual so thanks for watching and i'll see you next time make sure you subscribe click that little bell icon to be notified of upcoming videos support us on patreon like us on Facebook and Instagram at Model Railroad Technique.